Hi everyone, my name is Beatrice Kampi and I'm the head of the Islamic and Indian Art Department here at Chiswick Auctions. I've been heading the department for over four years now and we've been steadily growing. Our department usually offers between four to six sales a year, the two most important taking place in spring and fall during the so-called Islamic Art Week and Asian Art Week in London, gathering a great clientele and audience from all over the world coming to see the beautiful art that is exhibited in London in this time. This spring, we are very thrilled to present two extraordinary sales. The sale in the morning on the 29th of April at 11 a.m. features 111 lots from a single owner collection, mostly focused on the arts of Iran. We are gonna present a great variety of ceramics, textiles, lacquer work and manuscripts, mostly from Iran, as I say, and they're all going to be featured in this single owner collection. In the afternoon of the same day, at one o'clock, we are going to instead present 418 lots coming from different collectors and sources, mostly located in the UK, but we're also going to have a very exciting selection of Islamic manuscripts coming from a private American foundation. And now, let us introduce you to a few of the highlights from the upcoming sales. One of the amazing calligraphic panels that we have on offer in our single owner sale in the morning session on the 29th of April is this lovely folio from the now dispersed Nasruddin Shah album. It presents beautifully decoupaged and whimsical designed borders and very interesting Persian Nasalik Mash calligraphic composition on the inside. It's going to be offered at 1,000 to 1,500 pounds, and it was produced in Qajar, Iran, circa 1888. The calligraphic composition shows a sort of levha or practice trial round for the calligrapher to show how masterful he was. The style, as I said, it's Nastalik Mash and it can be read on multiple different ends. So it almost looks upside down, but instead it's just like a constant repetition of different letters from the bottom to the top and back. The calligraphic panel is signed by Amara Hassani and it was probably once part of the Nasreddin Royal Shah album that was created for it to mark his 40th anniversary. Another amazing lot we want to talk to you about today is this beautiful, large, gilt bronze standing figure of the historical Buddha, Siddhartha Gautama Shakyamuni. It comes from Thailand, from the Ayutthaya period. It's called Yuthong Si style, and it normally dates to the mid 14th to the mid 15th century. The lot is going to be offered in our afternoon sale, and it has an estimate of eight to 12,000 pounds. It comes from the late Jean-Pierre Yonan collection and it was in his house in London since the 1980s. The sculpture has the typical quintessential features of the Yu Thong Si style period of Thai medieval sculptural production. There is this wonderful blend between Sukhothai and Khmer influences, but there are also elements of innovation typical of this new part of Thai art. The very elongated silhouette and the very gentle serene face are typical from the Sukhothai era. The line framing the hair band and the contours to the lips are very typical of the Khmer period. In terms of innovation, we will notice that from the Ushnisha, the cranial protuberance of the Buddha, one of his typical Lakshana, there is a slightly snail-like shape with like a flaming halo that is called Razni. And this is typical of the later period of the Ayutthaya production. Another element typical of this production is the so-called mudra, the gesture of the Buddha, with both hands held up to the beholder in front of them 
in the so-called Abhaya Mudra, the fear not gesture. This is a completely innovative and very different mudra that appears just in the Ayutthaya production and not before. And it's called Calming the Ocean Gesture. Another amazing lot that it was such a pleasure to work with is this gorgeous and profusely ivory inlaid Visagapatam rosewood dressing box. It has been treasured by a British family for over 100 years and it's the typical quintessential production of exotic hardwood that the British officials would have gathered and brought to England in the 19th century. It was produced in the Zagapatam, which is current day Andhra Pradesh in the Coromandel coast of India, and it dates to the mid 18th century. It's going to be offered with an estimate of 1,500 to 2,500. These beautiful dressing boxes were produced in Andhra Pradesh, in the Zagapatam, that was of course one of the key centers of export and trade between the West and the East. It's very interesting because it's profusely inlaid with a great variety of typical exotic flowers, local, available, lotuses and tulips and many more. The design is definitely similar to another great hit of the European Expo market, the printed cotton chins or palampores that were used as hangings in the houses of the British Raj officials. What is very exciting about this box, it's a completely unbroken tie with one specific British family that had it in, his, in their house for a hundred years. The family was based in Surrey and uh, it, the box originally entered the family through a maiden aunt, Miss Laura Bray, who passed away in 1933. We're very lucky that we still have some of the official documents of the inheritance procedures. So we have a letter dating from 1933 when Miss Laura Bray passed away and a solicitor contacted the mother of the present vendor to say that she was gonna receive this beautiful dressing box as part of her inheritance. The mother of the present vendor was only 13 though, so the father had to jump in and take care and promise that the box will be delivered to the mother of the present vendor upon her 21st birthday. The box was on view in their house in Surrey from 1954 until 2004, when the present vendor inherited it. Boxes like these show the wonderful connection between India and England from the British Raj until today. And this one is probably my favorite lot in the whole sale. We see here a lovely Indian painting of a standing Hindu female devotee, ready to go to puja, which means a, a ceremony or a prayer. It's probably from Delhi, Mughal India, and it normally dates this kind of production between the 1675 and 1720. So we are still in the late 17th century. It comes from a very exciting collection called Geyer Anderson Collection, a number of Indian paintings of which are in great museum and institutions all around the world, including the British Museum and the Victoria and Albert Museum in London. The painting, offered in the afternoon sale, is valued at £2,000 to £3,000. This Indian painting, as I said, is probably part of this very prestigious collection of Geyer Anderson, it was bought by the present vendor in November 2020 and by repute it was part of the father's and mother's collection of the previous vendor who bought them at auction in the 1950s in London. So how can we tell that it's part of the Gary Anderson collection? Well, too little information. First of all, in the back of the painting there is an inventory cartouche it clearly mentioned that it was part of the Gernerson collection and a number, one to six. The abbreviation of the provenance and the number are also repeated on one of the concentric borders around the painting itself, on the blue border in black ink. What is even more exciting 
is that the twin painting, or let's say the painting that was supposed to be seen together with this as a muraka, as an album page, is part of the National Gallery of Australia. And it presents exactly the same provenance title, so credit line Gary Anderson Collection, GAP 1 to 5. So we have the 1 to 6, they have the 1 to 5. Wouldn't it be amazing if the National Gallery of Australia decided to finally reunite these two twin brother paintings? The borders are also very exceptional in this case, with these beautiful pink budding lotuses that are created, they are creating a grid pattern. The lady is dressed in a typical uh, embroider, gold embroider, ochre yellow sari, and you can still see her choli, her top, underneath it. The depiction and the great quality and draftsmanship are typical of Mughal India and her nose, face and decorative details and ornaments are also in line with this production. I hope you enjoyed this selection of highlights that we presented today. In case you wish to know a bit more about them, if you're curious to see them in person or want to see some more of the items that we have on offer in our sales, please do drop by in our Chiswick Auctions main branch in 125 Colby Road. Our viewing times are Monday to Friday, 10 to 5, and on weekends we're open on Saturdays, 11 to 4. These views are going to be open for the public from the 23rd of April until the 29th of April. See you there! Thanks you for watching!